All right, so in this video, I want to talk about some carbohydrate derivatives, just molecules that are related to sugars, similar in structure, or come from sugars um, that are in some way or another related to biochemistry, specifically medical biochemistry and clinical correlations. So we'll start off with sugar acids. First one here is ascorbic acid or uh, vitamin C. Um, it's, you can see that it's kind of got um, the furanose form, this five-membered ring here with that, that oxygen as a member of the ring. Um, so it is carbohydrate derived and vitamin C is important because it's required for the hydroxylation of proline and lysine residues uh, in collagen synthesis and that contributes to the structural integrity of collagen and a deficiency in vitamin C results in scurvy and one of like the some of the key uh, symptoms include like bleeding gums and bruising really easily and things like that okay uh, another sugar acid is glucuronic acid looks very very similar in structure to to glucose it's got the whole down up down um except that carbon number six up there carbon number six right here uh is not a ch2oh it's not an alcohol it's instead a carboxylic acid okay so that actually looks like this and of course it can be written in its carboxylate form okay uh glucuronic acid uh, shows up in and and is important in the structure of uh, glycosaminoglycans or gags or gags which are important in the extracellular matrix uh, and in connective tissues like uh, cartilage and whatnot. Um, glucuronic acid um, also reacts with bilirubin, which is a breakdown product of heme, uh, to form conjugated bilirubin, uh, which is water soluble and can be excreted safely. Um, bilirubin is originally, until, until it conjugates with uh, glucuronic acid, is not water soluble. Um, so glucuronic acid allows it to be excreted safely because bilirubin, if it builds up, is toxic. Okay, um, next up, sugar alcohols or polyols. So let's go down a little bit more. Okay, so um, here we've got glycerol, um, very similar in structure to glyceraldehyde, which we saw earlier. Instead of an aldehyde up top here, it's just uh, an alcohol. And it can also be represented like this, where each vertex represents uh, a carbon and the hydrogens are implied. Uh, and glycerol can, um, the idea here is that it can combine with three fatty acids to make a triglyceride. Uh, it, people talk about glycerol being the, the, the backbone for triglycerides. And I put kind of here because it's not like it doesn't just combine with three fatty acids to, to make uh, triglycerides, at least not in our bodies. Um, we have this uh, in our liver. We have glycerol kinase, which uh, creates glycerol 3 phosphate, and that can go through um, to, to make phosphatidate, which combines with the um, fatty acids to actually make triglycerides. But I, I digress. Um, the point is that. This is very similar in structure to um, glyceraldehyde or dihydroxyacetone, and it just basically has just a bunch of alcohols, hence polyols. Okay. Um, sorbitol. So sorbitol right here uh, is very similar in structure to glucose. In fact, the only difference is right here. It's got an alcohol instead of an aldehyde. In fact, we've got glucose down here. The most oxidized carbon is this aldehyde right here. The difference between glucose and sorbitol is right there. Um, so aldose reductase acts on this aldose, which is glucose, um, here, uh, uses NADPH to actually reduce glucose to sorbitol, uh, and then sorbitol in this polyol pathway can, um, be reduced to, to fructose by sorbitol dehydrogenase, um, which requires NAD+. Now, sorbitol, um, is osmotically active and it can draw water into cells and that, and in, in doing that, it can cause damage to those those cells, and um, this can be particularly problematic if it if it builds up. Okay, and and it builds up in hyperglycemic states, um, and that's that's why it's um, associated with um, diabetes. So um, hyperglycemia. If there's a bunch of uh, glucose, and a lot of it is turned into sorbitol, and sorbitol builds up and it draws water in these cells, it's particularly problematic in the cells of the lens and, and pericytes in the, in the retina um, and, and, and Schwann cells. So they can result in cataracts, retinopathy, and uh, peripheral neuropathy in the peripheral nervous system. So, um, so these are associated with uh, diabetes, okay? Um, and it, yeah, like I said, it's particularly problematic in those cells because of uh, aldose reductase going through and just producing a bunch of sorbitol and that sorbitol not being converted into fructose. Um, galactitol, 
shown up here is um, it's basically the same idea except and actually it's produced from galactose though um, which is also an aldose remember it's a c4 epimer of glucose um, so galactose is converted into galactitol um, by that aldose reductase the same enzyme is used here to produce galactitol and if that builds up um, it, it, it can build up in the lens it's associated with cataracts in galactosemia because in, in galactosemia there's high concentration of galactose okay so those are some sugar alcohols to be familiar with